you guys, this is Miss Pruitt again. Um, and I wanted to make another a video about how to graph piecewise functions. Um, but this one is where you kind of use a bit of a shortcut. And I just want to explain. So this is the same piecewise function from my previous video. And I'm going to graph it this time using a shortcut. If you are not comfortable with using this, you do not have to use it. But Let's say that you already, you already know how the graph is supposed to look like because um, you know your parent functions, you know about transformations. Um, you really don't have to come, or, uh, come up with a table of values. So it is important, though, that you know the general shape of each part of this function. So one part of this function, the very first part, is a quadratic and it is um, reflected over the x-axis. So this graph is going to look something similar to that. Next, I have the square root function. I know it starts at zero and it keeps going. Well, it doesn't exactly curve down at all, but there we go, it gradually increases. All right, and then last but not least, I have my linear function. Uh, shifted down four or over four, um, but that's just going to be a line. So what you want to do in order to be successful with this shortcut is only focus on your endpoints. So what I mean by that, only focus on your endpoints, is that I know how my graph is supposed to look. I'm just going to follow what is included and what is not included. All right, so starting with the first function, negative x squared. I'm going to follow that graph all the way up to um, x equals 0. All values from negative infinity all the way up until 0. So I'm only going to plug in this endpoint. I'm not meaning to cross it down, I'm meaning to underline it. I'm only going to plug in that endpoint into my function. So here, I'm only going to plug in, it'll be negative, uh-oh, it'll be negative 0 squared, which is a bit redundant. Won't let me square. Sorry, it's like a boundary right there. Negative 0 squared is just 0. And it is not included. It is not included. So I know I'm going to have a point on my graph that's not included at the point 0, 0. When x is 0, y is 0. And that graph is going to follow that shape. It's not pretty, but it is fast. All right, so next. My next graph has, or my next function, excuse me, has two different endpoints, 0 and 4. I know what the general shape is supposed to look like. I'm only going to plug in my endpoints. So I'm going to plug in 0, and the square root of 0 is 0. And I'm going to plug in 4. That will give me the square root of 4, which is 2. Only the uh, 0 value is included, and I know that because it says less than or equal to zero. So one point I'm getting from here, it's zero, zero. I plugged in zero, I got zero. Another point is four, two, but this one is not included. So you start, start plotting. Zero, zero is included. So I'm gonna fill in this empty, that, this once empty circle. I'm gonna fill it in. And I know I'm also gonna have a point at four, two, one, two, three, four, two, but it's not included. And I know the general shape of my graph uh, without having to plot the points. Last but not least, I have a line. And it's going to be for all values that are greater than four, but not including four. But I'm still going to plug it in. I'm going to plug in my endpoints. If I were to plug in four, I would get four minus four, which is zero. This will give me the ordered pair. Sorry, I didn't give you an ordered pair there. Um, this will give me the ordered pair 4, 0. 
because I plugged in four, I got zero. So this I know is not included. This point is not included. I know that because it says greater than. It does not say greater than or equal to. So I'm going to go to four, zero and not include that point. And I'm going to continue on graphing a line that follows a slope of one. And that's the shortcut way to graph a piecewise function.